film that is about to debut tomorrow, the Pioneer Theater. And this is a 9-11 related uh, feature film that is a dramatic story filled with uh, very, very personal, emotional stories combined with educational information on uh, the, the alternative research of, of 9-11 and how uh, very important questions should be asked of the official account. And uh, we're very glad to have the two of the main actors and uh, uh, producers here who will be here throughout the week. And uh, you're going to hear all about it. I, I urge everybody to go see this film called The Reflecting Pool. First, welcome up, please, actor and producer Joseph Culp. Hi there. I'm Joseph Culp, actor, filmmaker, and producer of The Reflecting Pool. It is a new investigative drama, the first, uh, about an investigation into 9-11. Uh, it is a, a fictional story about the struggle that many of the people here and many people across the nation have been facing, trying to get the truth about 9-11. It's about journalism, and it's about that human struggle that we're all facing now. It does present a lot of the most salient points about the problems of the 9-11 Commission report. Um, please come to the Pioneer Theater. We're premiering, New York premiere, tomorrow, 7-11. Uh, uh, at the Pioneer Theaters uh, on uh, 3rd Street and Avenue A. And we'll be doing Q&A there for every show through the 18th. Uh, my partner, uh, Yada Kupsch, the writer, director, and my co-star in the film, uh, please come down and see the film. We'll be... Uh, we, we absolutely support the 9-11 ballot initiative. We'll be taking signatures there uh, for every show. Great chance to come see a film, get informed, sign the petition, and uh, please come out and see the film. Thank you. Here's Yadik Kupsch, director of The Reflecting Pool. Thanks. Thank you, uh, our esteemed uh, speakers, and have, for having us here uh, today, Les. Uh, and just a few words about uh, the research that went into the movie. Uh, I spent about three years uh, right after 9-11 happened doing personal research just to my own benefit, uh, never bought the official story. Um, after three years, I, I was hoping someone else would make a movie about that because uh, it was so glaringly wrong uh, what, were, what the media was feeding us at the time. But no one else has. There were several other little films and a lot of documentaries uh, made, but uh, nobody really tackled the issue from an investigative uh, perspective and that's, uh, that's when I decided to make the movie to write it and uh, workshop it with Joseph who is my acting coach as well um, one of many but probably the best <laughs> and um, I just want to say one uh, little thing about the research because we've been um, interviewed many times and uh, reviewed many times and uh, w whenever we are interviewed by a corporate uh, newspaper or a radio station they always say the research uh, is uh, verifiable in parentheses. Yeah. Uh, however, the, all the research that uh, we used in the making of the movie actually comes from corporate sources. Believe it or not, the New York Times, yeah, yeah, yeah. Washington Post, even Fox News, uh, a lot of the stuff they've been reporting. And uh, they, they marginalize all this information and they don't they never put it on front page news uh, they don't never put it on uh, prime time uh, television but it's all out there it takes a long time to dig into it but everything you need to know to answer your own questions about 9-11 has been reported in fact in mainstream press and on television there's a lot of clips on youtube from September 11th, uh, re numerous reporters reporting MSNBC, Fox News reporting on underground explosions in the towers, uh, reporting on Building 7 before it collapsed, uh, sound bites from firefighters saying the building is going to be pulled, step away. There is no question that Building 7 was controlled, demolished based on corporate media sources. So anytime someone tells you, okay, this is a fictional movie, and they say their sources are verifiable, they are. They are because if you, this, if, if you want to discount our movie, you have to discount New York Times, Washington, Washington Post, Fox News, and every other media outlet, corporate media outlet we use. That's why that was, I made a point of using only the sources that were reported in mainstream media. However, I verified a lot of the information from 
uh, with, with other 9-11 Truth websites just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. And I, we have, we've been getting a lot of terrific response and support from the 9-11 Truth movement, uh, for which I'm, uh, we both are very, very grateful. So thank you again. I hope you can uh, come and spread the word about the premiere tomorrow. We'll be at the Pioneer every night in person answering questions at every show uh, starting Friday the uh, 11th all the way to the following Friday the 18th. And the Pioneer is at uh, Avenue A and 3rd. Times uh, are 7 p.m. and 9 p.m., although we'll probably push the 9 p.m. a little further, maybe to 9.15, 9.20, so people can, uh, uh, we can answer questions from the audience. Thanks again. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you yeah. so much. You have postcards for folks, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, great, great. Joe Friendly's Truth for Change. Um, we'd like to talk about your movie called The Reflecting Pool. Could you tell us? something about this movie and um, why, why did you make this movie what is it about? Well, we made it because no one else uh, made something like this. Nobody else has made a dramatic investigative drama about uh, all the omissions and uh, falsehoods surrounding the official version of 9-11. Um, we're not the first movie to tackle the issue, but it, it is really the first investigative drama that takes the entire subject of 9-11 puts it in an investigative journalist perspective. Um, and while doing that, it also introduces a human element of a father of uh, one of the victims, uh, played by Joseph Cole, who introduces a personal arc to the story. And uh, the character I play is a Russian-born journalist. Uh, he's, he represents the skeptic. And uh, the two characters are polarized against each other. Paul Cooper's character, the character of Paul Cooper is, is a, a true believer in the conspiracy, it's something that we haven't been told, whereas my character comes from a completely skeptical, um, uneducated perspective about what happened that day, and throughout the movie he, he, he can slowly begins to change his mind based, based on indisputable evidence. So in the course of the film, what, what happens is there's, it's a story about an investigation. It's uh, an investigation, essentially, that's fictional, that hasn't happened, although there have been many journalists who have tried to get into these issues. Some have reported on them, some have chosen not to. And I think that that's really, in many ways, the point of the film, uh, one of the many points, but a strong one, that there's been a level of uh, sort of journalistic silence or a lack of integrity in America regarding 9-11. For some reason, it's, it became taboo to say anything different about uh, what happened that day uh, with regard to uh, the official version uh, from the government and what was published in the 9-11 Commission report. Now, it's come out in, in, in recent years that the 9-11 Commission report was greatly flawed, that it was greatly compromised. There's many things that didn't show up in the report that are alarming about what happened on 9-11 from how the two towers came down, Building 7, uh, the stand-down order for the NORAD to not interfere with the planes, uh, many, many uh, testimony from firefighters, of what they heard and saw that day, not even included in the report. So it, it was incumbent, finally, upon some filmmakers, and it turned out to be us, to make a film uh, that was a dramatic film, sort of like in All the President's Men or JFK, that took you on a human journey into those issues because there, there are issues as American citizens, and they're not things that should just slip into the past, because everything that's happened since 9-11, uh, it became a platform for two wars, for the loss of all kinds of civil liberties. Um, it's very important that we don't let it go, that we continue to look at it. And uh, I hope that the film, and, uh, which is premiering on Friday, uh, July 11th, in New York City at the Pioneer Theater, um, will be a way to introduce some of those strong points to the public, a greater, wider public who doesn't watch documentaries, and um, invite them into the discussion and into uh, a curiosity about what's happened here and what happened on that day. There is very, very strong research has been done, but it doesn't get to the wider public. Mainstream media tends to black it out or, or underreport it. 
but I'll, I will say that everything in the film, which Yadik researched diligently, um, uh, comes from media sources that have been verified. But you and many of us didn't hear about them. They appeared on the back pages, certainly not front page. And you just didn't hear about it. Which brings up the issue of censorship in America. A lot of people don't believe there's censorship in America. Um, but there are many forms of censorship. And uh, under-reporting, marginalizing, and self-censorship um, by editors of major news media outlets. Uh, and these are all forms of censorship. And they're very, very effective, much more effective than just uh, preventing someone from writing a story because then someone can say uh, take take the story to another um, publication and so forth but if you just publish it once and put it next to the obituary page no one will ever read it but then you can at least say yes we reported it you know, five years ago but I don't know why you guys never read it mm -hmm. so all the sources we used in the making of the movie about 95% come from established media sources such as the New York Times, Washington Post, uh, even Fox News, uh, which periodically reports some accurate information. They have to. They want to stay in business. But um, there's nothing that you could really dispute. Uh, it's all verifiable. You can, uh, and I don't mean it quotes. Like we've been getting some reviews when they say our facts are verifiable they're made up, uh, put it in quotation marks. They're not. If you want to dismiss the, the content, the factual content of our movie, you have to dismiss, as I said, the New York Times, Washington Post, uh, government, the FBI, uh, the U.S. Army, uh, you know, Air Force uh, newsletters, and all kinds of mainstream publications and official publications, because that, those were our sources. Which brings up that the issue, again, of we don't by nature, I think, as Americans, and I say this as distinct from Jadik's experience because he originally came from Poland, we don't have a very developed muscle when it comes to looking uh, more critically at what comes out in the media, on television, or in the papers. We tend to say, well, if it's in the paper and it's on television, it's got to be true. Uh, that's just how we were trained and how we were raised, and, and it's naive naive, and we would do well to start now, as a public, developing more of a critical eye about what we see. But it's very hard to do. I mean, that takes effort. It takes the willing, we have to be willing to be informed, and, and it, it takes more work to get informed. Uh, you have to, one wonderful tool, of course, now is the internet, which has a kind of wonderful democratizing you know, effect that you actually personally can go after things and, and find information that uh, normally wouldn't have been available. It's a wonderful uh, 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 counterbalance to what may be imbalanced reporting. But uh, as I say, that's a that's a, a developed, uh, underdeveloped sense that we as, as citizens uh, just we don't we have or we don't have. Uh, uh, we have to take more responsibility about getting information. Uh, with regard to 9-11, best possible thing that could happen is happening now, which is the 9-11 ballot initiative in New York City. Uh, this is uh, revolutionary, I think, and, and incredibly healthy for, the, for our democracy. Is saying, no, no, we demand further investigation. We're not going to leave it up to a, a compromised government investigation, investigating itself. You see, we're going to now, as a public, say, no, we're going to do our own. We're going to get the best people, the best researchers, many who are out there, do and do a new investigation. And the ballot initiative is on right now in New York City. People are, are, are they're gathering signatures daily. Can you tell us a little bit more about the ballot initiative, how, um, what, it's, you know, what it's about what it's going to and, do. and how, um, what how I, people could actually find out about it? Sure. I think there's a, um, there's a website. The website is uh, and, www nyc org. So that's www.nyc911initiative.org. And you can go there to that website, review the material, which is saying this will be an independently funded, so it's not going to come out of your tax dollars. 
you sign up for this, and what it gives us the power, New Yorkers, all the five boroughs, the power to do is put it to a vote in, in uh, the next election uh, on the ballot saying, would you vote for this in favor of a new independent investigation of 9-11? And you won't have to pay for it. You just have to authorize it. And if that gets authorized, then that independent panel will have the power to subpoena, uh, which means uh, they can get people to testify under oath. And, um, and if they lie, they go to prison. And if they Simple lie, there are consequences to that. So the criteria, the, there's a criteria of amount of signatures that are necessary for to get this on the ballot. So it, is it for when people go to vote in November, there's going to be a question if we can get enough signatures that it'll, it'll be on the ballot, uh, whether a uh, person voting want a new investigation about 9-11. As I understand it, they need uh, essentially 30,000 signatures, which is not very many at all. But then in order, just in case, uh, uh, there are ways to um, discount signatures, whatever, so they need at least twice that. So maybe 60, maybe 100,000. That's nothing. Nothing. And this, especially with the day and age of computers and whatnot, it, getting 100,000 signatures should be nothing. Uh, it, it, uh, it would be nothing short of revolutionary for that to happen. Other people would be inspired by it and saying, we don't have to stand for, you know, under-investigated, you know, terrorist attack. We can make sure we get all the information we deserve to have. It's, uh, it's a, it goes back to this thing about us really being an informed public. And if we're an informed public, we could have that informed democracy that the forefathers talked about, um, who said there should be a revolution every 25 years anyway, just in case, in case people get in power for too long. And Thomas Jefferson said that. He said, really should have a, a, a revolution of some kind every 25 years. Uh, and there probably hasn't been one in 200 years. So right. maybe, you know, this could be the start of that. Well, I hope all the people watching this will take that initiative to go to the website to add their signature to the uh, And ballot I might add that the 9-11 ballot initiative, uh, people will be gathering signatures at all of our shows of the Reflecting Pool, which is at the Pioneer Theater starting on July 11th. And uh, we'll be doing Q&A every show. Two shows a night, 7 and 9 p.m., uh, and people will be there uh, after the film. You'll see the film. You'll hopefully be moved and angry and want to sign up on this uh, petition. And it'll be a very effective uh, way to um, mobilize that support. Can we talk a little bit more about the film, The Reflecting Pool? Um, it starts tomorrow night, which is July 11th at 7 p.m., and the second showing is on uh, at 9 p.m. Okay, um, Yana, can you, um, you began the research on, on the investigation. Can you tell me, can you tell us um, how long you started to research um, the discrepancies in the investigation that led you to, um, to die? Did you had to do something else about it? I never officially, officially, I never bought the official story from day one. Uh, it took me about a month before I started really looking into uh, alternative sources of information uh, about 9-11. Uh, there were already websites coming out uh, in September of 2001 that offered alternative uh, opinion about what happened that day. Uh, some of them were very good, some of them were uh, probably set up as uh, COINTELPRO counterintelligence. So there's a lot of misleading information and it took me about three years of personal research into uh, underreported articles, marginalized news bits, and uh, getting uh, hard copies of actual publications, governmental publications. Um, I was doing this all just to my own benefit. I, 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 was, I, I had never intended to make a movie about 9-11. In fact, between 2001 and 2005, I had shot another movie uh, that had no relation to any political issues. So, by 2005, I, I was hoping that someone would make a movie like that. Uh, Certainly, I didn't feel I was up to the task, uh, mainly because I didn't have any money. And I, I understood that at, at, at 
picture like this would require a tremendous financial background and backup of uh, maybe even a studio. Um, and a lot of documentaries started coming out. So I, I was pretty confident that someone would do uh, an investigative dramatic film, but nothing like that happened. So I was really getting more and more angry that the, the, the artistic community, the creative community, if you will, would not tackle this subject at all. But there are a few minor exceptions, of course. Let me ask you one item. Why do you think there is this underreporting or lack of reporting by the mainstream media regarding this? I mean, as you, as you say, most of your information does come from the mainstream media, but in a manner that's underreported or right. on the back page. Well, everything that's wrong in this world is being reported once at least in some paper around the world, maybe in Jakarta. There's a Times, a corporate Times newspaper in Jakarta from which uh, I, I took a one tidbit of information regarding 9-11. There was uh, an article about the, uh, this, uh, in Sri Lanka, actually, they, they reported that all the uh, scrap metal from uh, WTC was put on barges and shipped off to India and China, um, and they, it was a big article, very thorough, and the corporate paper, and uh, I had to, that was the first time I heard about that, and then I went back to American publications, and I verified that it was really true, all this evidence went out, it was put on barges and shipped off, and, uh, and recycled, and some of it actually was rejected from recycling in India because of uh, pollution. Anyway, long story. So is that in the film? That, well, you have to come and see for yourself. But we have a recycling scene, one of my favorite scenes. I'm just curious, what about the pollution? Was it? Uh, we didn't deal with uh, pollution. There's a great uh, documentary uh, about uh, pollution by Penny Little. Oh, Poison Death. Yeah. Uh, that, that I highly recommend. Uh, but we we. That, that's a good question because we, for every issue that we talk uh, about in the movie about 9 11, there's probably have, 10 more. There's 10 or, or 100, 50 more that we had to more. edit out of the story just because we didn't want to overwhelm the audience. So we were really, well, actually, I was because I was responsible for writing it. I, I was really very careful what, as what information I would include in the story not only to be informative to the audience, but also to support the, the dramatic development of the story. Which is very important in a, in a dramatic story rather than a documentary. There are a lot of people who don't watch documentaries, and documentaries arguably at times can get very uh, pedantic, uh, pedantic and, and oppressive because they're just hitting you with information right, left, and center. In dramatic film, one of the good points of the reflecting pool, I think, is that it, it more gently brings an audience through a character study into these important news points or information points, and that way it gives you time to digest it, look at what's happening to the characters, how does that affect me as an audience member, and then give me a little bit more. So it was uh, Yadik's job uh, to really make sure that, um, and to choose the strongest points to the 9-11 uh, 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 controversy, shall we say, that uh, would hit home and be enough to get you thinking as an audience member and get you to question that, boy, I haven't heard about that. That doesn't look right to me either. Uh, maybe they're right. Maybe we, we should be more curious, uh, but not to uh, bombard you so that uh, you're overwhelmed and you turn it off. Because I think the turning off mechanism has been uh, well in operation here in the country. It's like, it's just so much. I mean, my personal experience, if I may, was that as Yadik was researching it as a citizen, uh, I wasn't. You know, I was a, an actor and working and doing things for artistic gain and purpose and all that. And uh, I have some feelings politically, but, you know, I just have children to raise, money to make, you know, like a, month, a lot of people. I just, I, I can't look at all this stuff. So, you know, I'm very grateful in a way that I was asked to come aboard the project and it, it educated me as to some very important things that you know make you finally realize how much you care about what's about a level of truth that you're living in, in your country and so it's uh, um, that 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 became you know very essential to me 
with the project, and, and I think hopefully it, it's communicated through the film. Did you, uh, yeah, did you actually, in, in writing this, uh, in taking uh, all these actual news clippings, uh, verifying all these clippings, and then juxtaposing a fictional line on top of it, did you, in fact, um, come across or meet someone who um, fulfills Joe's, Joseph's character, the father of uh, someone who passed away, or in your case, did you actually meet a person who, who lost that were in similar um, well, positions of, of the characters. I, the I, I have researched several family members who have lost their loved ones. So I haven't met anybody in person prior to making the movie. Um, but I had the privilege of, of meeting several people, including Ellen Moriani, Bob Michael Payne, um, and um, Joe's character, Paul Cooper. Uh, part of the, the part of his story is based on Ellen Moriani's attempt to sue the government under the RICO Act, much like William Rodriguez uh, did uh, subsequently, uh, both of which uh, uh, sued the losses were dismissed by higher courts. Uh, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot. every character we interview, that we interview in the film um, that has something to do with, with the tragedy is based on uh, a very specific individual who exists in real life, a true person, or an amalgam of, of several characters, just to condense the uh, information into one person instead of having three talking heads, we have one. Um, so, but everything that you hear is based on actual reporting. Um, there is no character like, like the one that I play, an in, in independent journalist. This, this is a purely fictitious kind of wishful thinking character for me because. Uh, personally, I have nothing to lose. Uh, I'm nobody. I have nothing except my family and friends. So I, I, I got nothing to lose. But I, I, under, I understand why people are not uh, willing to follow, to, 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 to do what my character, fictitious character in the movie does in real life, because there's so much to lose. You can lose your, easily lose your job. Many, many, many credibility lost their jobs or credibility yeah. whenever some celebrity comes out with a 9-11, uh, with questions about 9-11, like Rosie O'Donnell, she loses her job and is immediately re ridiculed in, uh, in the media. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie, Sheen. Charlie Sheen came out on, and I, I just recently watched on YouTube the CNN report on Charlie Sheen coming out about, or maybe with Entertainment Tonight, and immediately he had some very valid things, saying, look, this building collapsed with no airplane, uh, uh, these, these why weren't there interceptions? I mean, very valid, valid questions. Charlie Sheen becomes, is he crazy? Is he, all this strange rhetoric, you know, is he nuts? Uh, is he gone off the deep end? It's like, why would that be our response instead of, you know, is there anything to what he's saying? Well, because we're conditioned by the media to believe that every time you bring up uh, an alternative take on 9-11, you're automatically uh, marginalized as a conspiracy freak or... Yeah, it's like uh, you're, and you're automatically accusing the government, which we're not necessarily accusing anyone. It's really accusing ourselves of not being more demanding and curious about what has happened here and what's, what is available. Can you speak on that? I mean, as you said, most people get turned off. It's been so long. They're so busy. They have their own dependent lives. And, you know, most of um, America knows that the 9-11 Commission report was put out. Yeah. And that there was a NIST investigation that seems to have cleared this up for um, America. Can you yeah, speak on, on this? People um, are aware of, of the 9-11 Commission report, which was a bestseller upon its publication. There are, some people are aware of the NIST, NIST, or National Institute of the Stand of Standards and Technology report that propel this pancake theory of the collapse of the Twin Towers. Um, well, what most people don't know is right. that is that, that report uh, has now, um, even two of the people who, who made that report have come out against it saying we were compromised and lied to, we didn't get the information that we needed. Uh, Philip Sheenan just put out a book called The Commission. He was a New York Times investigative reporter on the commission uh, uh, who has come out with a book saying, you know, it was completely compromised and uh, it doesn't really hold up. Uh, not to mention that the, the NIST report on their theory of the collapse has been unofficially revoked by NIST. They sent a letter to Dr. Stephen Jones, who's 
physicist who studied it again and said, guys, this doesn't hold up. And they said, you know what, you're right. And at this time, there's a letter, and you can find that letter online, saying you, uh, we, we officially do not have uh, uh, an explanation at this time about how they collapsed. But you and I don't know that because it's not front page news, and it's not on, it's not on your television. So these things have come out, but again, they don't get to the public at large. And they, so, they're being perpetuated. Like whenever uh, Larry Silverstein, the lease owner, the leaseholder of WTC, speaks out publicly, and someone uh, like We Are Change uh, asks him a question about uh, what happened with Building Seven, even he still, to, the, to this day, is insisting that it was the diesel fuel fire that brought down the building, even though the NIST report lists it as a low probability. It's like the last, lowest, probably. the lowest probability of occurrence. Is that because diesel uh, fires can't burns burn. at a very low temperature. Right. It has nothing to do with a building that collapses so perfectly, which you can watch multiple times. So we know through our research and through what NIST is unofficially now saying that the pancake theory is completely it's out. false. It's out, but they won't come out in the open, and the Fox News is not going to report that. And any, any major network or even minor network won't touch it because this is going to start a snowball effect and keep you know, going back to that day and what did in fact bring Building 7. And, and the only logical, only logical, even you could argue that it's the only scientific explanation of a building of that magnitude to collapse straight into a, its own footprint in 6.5 seconds or 13 if you count the uh, the penthouse, it's impossible without controlled demolition. It's against the laws of physics. It's not going to happen. And there are so many no. other laws of physics broken by uh, the official version of, of the collapse of the Twin Towers. And, uh, and it, so if it, should make us, it should make us just start to question. It should make us uh, be curious about uh, what really happened instead of just I think maybe what you were saying before was that why why don't we what is it that makes us not not want to be interested anymore like it's in the past it's over well it's not over okay it's not over 9-11 there's no closure for 9-11 we shouldn't assume that there should be there are people uh, 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 first responders who are sick and dying from uh, all, all the toxicity and everything that happened and from ground zero, and their claims are being rejected. These people are in pain. They're suffering. The, the Go victims. support Feel Good Foundation. Ah. Go online. Feel Good Foundation. Feel Good Foundation. Excellent foundation. It helps uh, first responders with their health issues and uh, financial troubles. So just go research so that. But the issue that there is no... Just repeat that, um, mm -hmm. just repeat that uh, website. It's the Feel Good Foundation, yeah. which benefits the first, first responders, responders and their families. Not being helped by the government. So, um, uh, www.feelgood. I'm not sure what the exact wording. I don't. If you want Google to Feel Good Foundation, good. you'll get there. Absolutely. But just to speak to that one more time, that it's it's there are these um, levels of of denial that we all live with uh, as human beings, and certainly in our culture. And it's easier to say it was painful, it was terrible, I'm scared, I just want to focus on my daily life. The problem is, is that when we do that and we resign it to uh, an improper commission report and a government that you know should be brought up on charges and questioned for uh, what they may know, uh, the prop when we do that, we do lose as a democracy. We lose our transparency of who we elected or who we would like to elect. And we sort of, we feel that people are untouchable. And this is wrong. This is wrong, you know. There, there are presidents, and there are vice presidents, and there are chiefs of staff, and we, we put them there. Uh, where the, they put themselves And there. maybe they put themselves there in this case, which is being naive. But, but in an ideal sense, you know, America's this, this experiment that's still going on. And, and it's okay if the experiment is, is, is not working. It means we have to fix it. So here's here's our opportunity. But the price we're paying for it not work, working is so it's so terrific high. and it's high, and it's, it, not just the 3,000 people who perished on 9/11 and all the families that suffer, 
because of that, but it's the subsequent wars in Afghanistan and Iraq that claim over a million lives and over 4,000 uh, American soldiers, uh, and it's, it's, it keeps going and going. One of the first things was that after 9-11, um, and they uh, proposed, immediately proposed 19 hijackers, not only were seven or eight found to still, still be alive, alive uh, but what we had, the first thing that developed was the Patriot Act, which made 300 million suspects. Yeah. And in fact, just yesterday, the Senate had signed the FISA bill, sort of abrogating the Fourth Amendment. And, uh, More wiretapping. Right, right. Yeah, they okayed that. The Senate and okayed further wiretapping in the country. How can we stand for that? How can we be the America that we were supposed to be, you know, and stand for that kind of, you know, we're well, giving, we're give, we give yeah. our liberties away. And it really boggles the mind because the Senate was overwhelmingly elected on an anti-war platform, the Democratic majority of the Senate back in uh, 2006, I think it was. And, uh, they reneged on every single promise they made to their uh, constituencies. And when Nancy Pelosi came out saying impeachment's off the table, uh, it, it was like, okay, I'm working for the other side now. Thank you very much for electing me, and now I'm going to do whatever they want me to do. And then every year they give they give Bush more money for the war, and another 180 or $60 billion, which was just recently approved by the uh, Democratic-led you know, Congress that was elected on an anti-war platform. So it's, you know. it's not really a government by the people and for the people. It's, it's what Chomsky calls uh, corporate socialism, you know, and you have all these corporations uh, pulling the strings, and we, the taxpayers, are, are basically paying the price. And the corporations, by the Doing corporations, whatever they the corporations yeah, they against want. the people. With the help of the Congress, as it turns out. So, I, you know, we're as far removed right now from the principles of democracy and what, what was what the foundation of America was. Uh, George Bush has more dictatorial powers than Cromwell did uh, in, in, in England during George III. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. He accumulated more powers than during the Cromwell dictatorship. It's, it's historically yeah. mind-boggling. Yeah. So, getting back to the fact that government actually has come back and said the government finally did an investigation. Well, actually, they, apparently they didn't want to do an investigation initially. And then initially, no. They were shamed into it. They yeah. were right. shamed to it by the Jersey girls. Right. Yeah. And then I think there was uh, the first 3 million authorized and then ultimately 16 million. Um, yeah, the amount they authorized. Very small sum. Yeah. The, the amount they authorized for, for the 9-11 commission uh, investigation was... Uh, Ten times as low as what they uh, allocated to the Bill Clinton impeachment proceedings, which was about fifty million dollars at the time. So uh, you do the math. So if the government has withdrawn, if the next agency of the government has withdrawn their explanation, uh, not official. Only in uh, through email. Yeah. People who are interested in. in they they sent on. they sent an, uh, a letter uh, to Stephen Jones, a physicist that has done some independent research and has uh, taken them to task on their research. And they, uh, as peers, said, you know, because they're physicists too, and they don't want to, you know, be caught, you know, falsifying their anything. Their credibility is on the line. Too. Everybody. And they still cannot explain the collapse of Building Seven. This has no explanation for it, and they keep postponing the release of their latest investigation. It was supposed to come out in December 2007. Uh, the final report on the collapse of Building Seven still hasn't come out as of you July. Know, and it's a good good point that people ought to know that when people say, "Well, you know, who's who's doing this research?" and you know, uh, we should trust the government. Uh, you know, right now there's many many people, uh, professionals, who have put their reputations on the line. The wonderful uh, uh, website, uh, Architects, and Engineers. Architects and Engineers for 9-11 yeah. Truth, uh, there's, there's in excess of 400 architects and engineers, these are professional, top in their field, who have put their credibility on the line saying, this doesn't work, 
doesn't look right to us. We demand another investigation. Same with pilots. Why would they pilots for 9/11? Pilots for 9/11 Truth and other thing. good organizations. All kinds of professionals are coming out. Hey, come the out. Firefighters are, uh, are working on something too. Yeah. I've heard. So I mean, we can look to those. Those are our fellow citizens who have high-level jobs, who have a lot to lose, uh, but they're staking their reputation on it to say, "Don't believe this official story. We need the other investigation." We deserve it. We need it. It's the only way we can get justice for anybody. Um, again, you know, there's a there's a scene in the reflecting pool in the film uh, that I like a lot, which uh, is a confrontation between our two characters, and it's where the journalist is really having a hard time coming to grips with it, and he's he's, he's going to cave in on a certain level, saying, I, "I just don't have a story here. I can't tie these things together." I, People aren't even going to believe, he says, my, my take on it. They're going to marginalize me. They're going to throw me out. And, uh, and my character, who really represents those people who have lost you know, personal loved ones, who live with trauma and the nightmares of that every day, uh, like Bob McElvain, Ellen Mariani, he pops up and says, yeah, but if we don't, you know, if you don't, say that's my right as an American it's it's my duty in fact as part of the country to seek out the truth find out what it is and expose it or else we don't have the democracy we don't have it if we don't take that as a personal interest some it's a big responsibility but in a, in a way it's it's quite natural it's quite natural it's uh, kind of the summit of our you know experience here in America is taking an interest uh, that being political is not something for other people. Right. You know, that's that's. I think a lot of us live in that place a lot. We, it's it's well, not for us to do. You don't even have to be political. It's, yeah. it's, it's not an issue of politics. It's an issue of decency and a level of personal denial. And it's almost as if we live in a parallel universe where, where we are aware of certain atrocities perpetrated by our own government and the other part of, of, of the world is completely not just oblivious to it but deliberately allowing themselves not to get interested in it, not to get involved. There's a lack of complete lack of introspection present and you can see that with the war in uh, Vietnam. Um, you know, it took uh, 10 years for that, 11 years for that war to end on its own volition. It didn't end because uh, of the anti-war movement. However, it greatly undermined the, the war effort. Um, the peace movement was fantastic, but it did not actually end the war. Um, today, we have the internet. We have. Um, I was in New York in 2003, a week before the war in Iraq started. I was marching with with 500,000 people down from uh, whatever it was, 42nd Street, uh, to uh, Union Square, and uh, the New York Times didn't even report it. And we had the biggest anti-war demonstration in the history of this country. Uh, half a million people. Uh, yeah, that was in February. Yeah. Right. I think 16 million people on every. On of every Project, continent, right. yeah. and you, it was not even, there was not a single picture of it. How is that possible? There's nothing. How is it's that impossible possible? without the media being com completely controlled. You're being given an or order by, yeah. by the people that fund their paper to say, you don't report on this. We don't want it to go in this direction. The war is going to happen, yeah. and you should not undermine our war effort by publishing an article about half the Manhattan walking down in protest of the of the plan to attack Iraq. And it, it was it was a really traumatic experience not, not seeing that reporting. So in a way, you know, we could be you know, again the nine eleven ballot initiative in New York City. Hopefully our movie could be a, a nice little conduit for that. There's there's something going on and I guess I want to I do stay positive about it, which is that there is an opportunity here, and I, maybe this administration, because they're going out, whoever's going to get in there, at least there's a change happening. And I think people are starting to be able to talk about these things more openly and feel permission to talk about them and not be you know, in, in that collusion of fear or silence or that it's not something we can talk about. 
that we don't necessarily trust what our government says, that we have a right to not trust it, in fact, and that we should go ahead and assemble and do that, do that very thing, you know, that, that it's very American, it should be. And so I feel that there is, there is a change possible here. I started talking about how I was still optimistic that this, there's a good opportunity now that people can start talking more rather right, than less. Right. And that, you know, even though we, we have a re right to be afraid of things, we should defy that, that impulse of fear and just keep talking about these issues in public, that it's not something to be relegated to, you know, uh, uh, conspiracy theories and so forth. And the fact that there hasn't actually been an official explanation by the government since the NIST retracted their explanation. Not, not one that, 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 that right. makes any sense. It doesn't really take a lot of effort if um, people, 300 million of them, or at least how many are in, um, the 8 million are in New York, could actually uh, just sign that petition to request that we, investi that we get an investigation. I like what Sen Senator Mike Gravel said today, which was... Uh, you know, New York could lead the way. Right. If New York passed this ballot initiative and, and got it uh, the, the referendum and, and voted and actually set up a new commission, it would be inspiring for not only this country but other countries as well who have had terrorist attacks, who uh, are questioning their government. It would be a very, very powerful uh, movement in, in consciousness and in, in political revolution, uh, people's movement. Dairy statesman and, and national treasure. Please welcome former Senator Mike Gravel. All we're doing here is you go to a doctor, you get a diagnosis. You don't like the diagnosis, you get another one. That's all we're doing. It's just a rational thing. We got George Bush's diagnosis of what happened on 9 11, and it sucks. And so we want another one. What's wrong with that? That's just rational thinking. Any human being would do the same thing. So we can embellish it with all of our thoughts. That We don't need all that. We just want another rational diagnosis of what happens. We all have different views as to what happened, but there's nothing wrong with having another diagnosis. But we are informed by one thing. We know that we want, when we want something from our government that we don't always get the proper response. For me, I have no confidence in our government. And so if you think you're ever going to get another commission from the United States government that's going to have any semblance of the truth, don't ever hold your breath because you'll never hear from it. The only chance you're ever going to have to have something meaningful is to have a citizen's commission. And that is what is so unique about the opportunity in New York City is to have a commission of citizens, not politicians who are going to be there to cover their backside. And whether it's Democrat or Republican, it's always after you, Gaston. We're going to take care of you, and then you take care of us, and we're never going to investigate too deeply because we may have friends on that side of the ledger who have contributed to my campaign or on this side of the ledger that have contributed to my friends over here. We'll never go too deeply. And that's the way the government of the two-party system that has a monopoly on power in our government and our society controls our society. That's the elites that control the polity. And so have, I have no confidence in that, and I hope you will mature to the same level and realize that you're never going to get justice from there. And Wayne is right. What we want to do is I have one regret. I lived through the Nixon presidency. I lived through those crimes. And we made a mistake that Richard Nixon, who was an unindicted co-conspirator, was not put in jail. And he rehabilitated himself. And the sooner we put in jail the president and the vice president who are criminals, the sooner we'll see future presidents that will not commit these crimes against fellow Americans and other citizens of the world. Hopefully your film will help inspire people to sign that petition? Some small um, way, I hope so. Could you, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, where the film is playing? And the film is playing in New York City for a full week starting July 11th through the 18th. And then we're, we're taking it at the Pioneer two, Theater. Two shows Which nightly at the Pioneer. On, um, third and Third Street and Avenue A. And then 
read about all the screenings, uh, they're listed on our website, www.reflectingfullfilm.com. For those of you who who can't make any of the screenings, please uh, order, a DVD. order a DVD on, uh, on the same website, www.reflectingfullfilm.com. And uh, contact us if you'd like to have a screening in your neighborhood. Uh, it's very oh, easy to set up. Help uh, you promote it if you want to have a screening in your community. Any screening that is uh, for the benefit of uh, a local 9-11 movement, uh, peace movement, uh, any non-profit uh, movement is free. You don't have to buy a license. Just contact us. We'll give you all the details. Yeah. So come, come down and see the reflecting pool at the Pioneer Theater and sign the NYC 9-11 petition ballot initiative. Uh, it was hard in as much um, we're poor people and we have credit cards, um, and not many credit cards, uh, and um, student loans, which come in handy when you're making a movie. Um, that's where the money came from. We didn't have any outside financing. We're not really, you know, not affiliated with any Hollywood studios or yeah. political groups or anybody. So we just, it, it's just a labor of love, and um, we're going to pay for it for the rest of our lives. I think, trying to get out of that, uh, which is fine. Um, it's uh, you know, it was it's uh, any movie is hard to make. All filmmakers here know that um, it takes at least two two years. And we did this in record time, actually, working especially yotic around the clock with editing and trying to get it out this year. The important thing was that for people to see it this year, so we released the DVD also online. You can order it at www.reflectingpoolfilm.com. You can get it right there and also out in the lobby. Um, and the important thing was that we, we knew there's an audience. We knew people were ready to hear about this stuff in a new way. And um, so the film needed to come out now. And this process of screening in independent theaters uh, can work. It's working here. Um, we have a tour going on all summer in Northeast, Northwest, uh, Maine, the International Film Festival up there. And eventually uh, we'll pick up uh, hopefully overseas and, and, and just continue doing a self-distribution because uh, if we go with a distributor, uh, in, unless we get a very specific deal, they can lock it up in a turnaround process and maybe people will never see it. So um, it's homespun and home done and all that, but uh, that's maybe a good metaphor for how uh, the, the truth movement and for the politics here in New York to go, the initiative. You have to do it kind of yourself because if you rely on outside funding or government people to do things for you. Um, we've lost our government, you know. Uh, we can't expect that from them. We have to do it ourselves. And that's maybe what we needed to learn through this process. What I'd like to say is that, you know, the only way we can be here in the theater and uh, continue the, through the next week is um, word of mouth mostly. Uh, we have a little bit of radio coverage and things like that going, but we no advertising. can't afford advertising. So it's all through emails, word of mouth, tell your friends, check out this movie. It's here only for a week. And um, that way it supports the movie to keep going through, through the next, for the tour for the summer and into the fall. So please uh, tell anybody you can just to go down and check it out. Really appreciate that. Uh, there will be people taking signatures for the 9-11 ballot initiative, which won't cost anybody anything, but it will put it on the ballot, and everyone in the New York area and the five boroughs can vote for a new independent investigation, which will be privately funded, uh, all of experts and physicists and architects and people who are not associated with the government to get the evidence as a matter of record. We had a screening, our first festival screening at Fort Lauderdale last year in the fall. The in the audience we had 250 Republicans, hardcore Mostly Republicans, Republicans um, yeah. who came to see the movie at a festival, the 9-11 movie. And uh, this was our biggest all-skeptic audience, so give or take a few um, people aware. And they loved the movie, and they uh, applauded. They some some of them after the show apologized to us for being for voting for Bush, and uh, it was w one of the most. Uh, yeah, we tried to be very you know yeah. sympathetic, saying, well you know I know some people may have voted for certain people in this administration, and people yell, guy yelled out, well we were wrong. 
So that from a, a crowd of mostly Republicans. And then afterwards, they we adjourned to a, a tent where 200 some odd uh, Republicans were talking about 9-11 in an open place together at one time. So I think what we saw was hopefully the value of the film, that it, it doesn't necessarily hit you over the head the same way a documentary does. It more gently bring, and through a drama brings you into the issues and made it safe for them to discuss it and think about it and maybe start to do a little research on their own. So that's certainly part of the hope of making the film. Yes, sir. Of, of many of uh, the activists that have come out and asked for new investigation and they have put forward this kind of uh, effort, uh, aren't you afraid that you're going to get a little bit of what I'm getting? <laughs> not bring it on, to paraphrase. Well, to quote directly. Uh, no, we're not. We uh, welcome any controversy. I, I hear your concern, and, and, and you've known people who have been, I guess, hurt or done in by it all, but. I don't think you can really go that route. I, I can't even think about it. Most most of the people uh, uh, involved in this, um, you know, they don't want to draw attention to themselves if, if indeed there are a, a people at all uh, that are concentrated and going after a film, you know, and filmmakers is, you know, just drawing more attention to the issue. So generally I think it's not even a, an issue. Uh, but, you know, I, I look at guys like Bill Pepper, uh, the lawyer who's, uh, spearheading the 9-11 ballot initiative and who intends to help set up this uh, new independent investigation into 9-11 here in New York. And uh, he's fearless, you know, and, and he's, uh, he doesn't think about it. And, and why should he? You know, you have to go on with what you think is true. Yeah. But uh, is there going to be like a reflecting pool too? Yes, maybe yeah, we'll... Uh, well, one I day we'll it should be a reflecting pool of the TV series. You guys the should write show, a yeah. sequel by getting the people yeah. involved uh, behind bars. That's the best sequel I can yeah. think of. Dear Truth for Change viewers, you've probably uh, come to uh, see the truth about 9-11 Truth, but for your friends who are holding back, I hope we can fill the Pioneer Theater on Avenue A and 3rd Street through the Friday the 18th. They have showings at 7 and 9. And these two guys are heroic. They do deserve your support. They have made a good film. The New York Times has uh, written uh, unfair reviews, I think uh, disgracefully. <laughs>